Uh, hi, I'm Chris Mercer. I'm the director of the campaign against canned hunting. Uh, this is an animal advocacy organization that Bev and I started, uh, which focuses on lions because of the unspeakable cruelty uh, of factory farming of lions that we call canned hunting, and also, of course, the dreadful danger that this industry poses to wild lion populations. There are only 2,700 wild lions left in South Africa, uh, and lions in Africa as a whole are becoming more and more threatened by the day. Canned hunting is the factory farming of lions. Uh, here is an industry whose whole business model is based upon cruelty. There's a whole cycle of cruelty here, right from the birth of the cub, all through the raising of the cub in uh, dreadful conditions, cramped conditions, until the final killing, uh, either by a bullet or by arrow. You should know that one of the most popular ways of killing canned lions is by bow and arrow. And this is not an easy or quick death, mostly. Now, the reason they call it canned hunting is because the animal is said to be in the can. In other words, the kill is guaranteed. There's no chase involved. The animal is either habituated to humans or he's in, a, in an enclosure from which he can't escape. And so he's in the can and hence the term canned hunting. There are about 8,000 lions currently in captivity in South Africa producing living targets for the hunting industry. Now the Global March for Lions is intended to amplify uh, and focus, bring a focus upon the work that we do. Uh, and people are marching in cities all over the world, uh, from Vancouver to Adelaide, from Sao Paulo to Stockholm. There are about 40 or 50 cities involved in this uh, campaign to raise awareness of the plight of lions. We have been campaigning against canned hunting for many years and we have found that conservation services in South Africa uh, and the government in particular are so ethically illiterate that we've determined that there is no point in even trying to get canned hunting banned in South Africa for reasons related to animal welfare. We even have the South African president stating at public meetings that compassion for animals is un-African. So what we have to do if we're going to bring this dreadful business to an end is to focus on cutting off the sources of funds and that means the trophy hunters. So about 55 percent of the trophy hunters come from the United States. So if we can get the United States Fish and Wildlife uh, to uh, raise the status of lions to endangered and bring them within that section of the Endangered Species Act, it will cut off that section of the business. Now about 40% of the uh, foreign hunters who come to South Africa to kill our lions for fun uh, come from Europe. Uh, and we are working, therefore, to raise awareness in Europe in the hope that we can get a European Union-wide ban on the import of lion trophies and body parts. Now, if we can succeed in that, that will cut off more than 90% of the basic funding for hunting. Now, we come to the spin-offs, and they're very profitable. Now the first spin-off out of which the lion farmers make millions is cub petting. I dearly wish that we could educate tourists not to indulge in cub petting because all they're doing is paying money to the canned hunting industry. The other source of funding uh, which is profitable for lion farmers is to post uh, a website on which they call themselves a wildlife sanctuary and they appeal for foreign volunteers. Uh, in this way thousands of volunteers come from overseas naively believing that they are contributing to conservation of the species 
when in fact all they are doing is enhancing the profits of the canned hunting industry. So those are the things that we have to focus on if we're going to get canned hunting banned. The other growing uh, profitable spin-off from uh, lion farming is the lion bone trade to Asia. Uh, because the forests of Asia have been emptied of their tiger populations, uh, the tr Chinese traditional medicine practitioners are turning now to the genetically similar lion bones in order to produce lion bone wine and lion bone cake. Uh, these products are sold for vast sums in uh, China and satellite countries like Vietnam. Uh, where, for example, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, lion bone cake, a hundred grams, will sell for a thousand dollars. This means that lion bones, after they've been treated, uh, are as valuable as rhino horn. Now, as you can imagine, this poses an enormous threat to wild lion populations because as the canned hunting industry in South Africa feeds uh, this uh, lion bone industry in Asia, more and more factories become invested in the product. More and more product is required and unfortunately uh, the Chinese regard the bones of wild lions as being more potent than those of captive bred ones. So the lion bone trade to Asia poses a substantial risk to the extinction of wild lion populations in Africa. I'd like to mention the Global March for Lions, which takes place on the 15th of March at cities all around the world. Uh, if you're not involved, I'd like to ask why not? Are you happy to see lions go extinct in the knowledge that you have done nothing to contribute to preserving them? If you go to our website, uh, cannedlion.org, and go to the page which, which is headed uh, Global March for Lions, you will see a list of all the cities where marches are taking place, and you will also see the links to the Facebook pages where you can contact the organizers. Uh, there's no reason why if those cities are nowhere near you, you should not uh, stage a march of your own in your city. It need not be huge.